My guest is a young sensation of women in blue. And I'm going to be sending an invite to Jemima Rodericks. Hi, Jemima. How are you? I am very good. Welcome to Life Connect. Thank, thank you for you so giving much. us your time. No, thank you for having oh. me. And I think you're, you're extra sweet to me. I mean, it's not that you can I, I can't I can't help it because you have made us proud on all levels and what I love about you the most is along with along with being a great cricketer you're so entertaining like a total package total dhamaka I would say so tell me everyone in your family is all uh, all good as well yeah yeah everyone's good and actually I'm telling you it's all run to my family if you see my family they all are like crazy like this only so it's just in the family I I've got nothing extra to do now. <laughs> So all the talent comes from mom, dad, brothers, all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full every, uh, all of the talent. <laughs> but one thing, Jimmy, uh, you know, I was trying to get to know you better and I realized both our parents have had a great Christmas and New Year because exactly nine months down the line, on the very same day, you were born in the 2000s and me in the 90s on the 5th of September. And coincidentally, this is the fifth episode of Life Connect. So five, five, five. Wow. Give me a high five. So, <laughs> even my jersey number is five. <laughs> I know that. Even my lucky number is five. So this yeah. is going to be a total Makeda episode. I'm, I can already I, feel I, the situation. Yeah, I know. It is going to be. Thank you so much. I'm really excited for today. Yeah, I can see that. And Jenny, you started playing uh, cricket at the age of four with your brothers, right? Right. How was that experience? To be very honest, I'll tell you, I was the biggest cheater cock in the entire world. I could tell you that. <laughs> and uh, since, you know, uh, my parents always wanted a girl after getting two sons. So uh, then I was the most pampered since I was the youngest and also I was a girl. So I was the most pampered. So uh -huh. when we used to play with my brothers in the gully, so I used to bat, I used to play. And then when I used to get out, I used to every time say, no, 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 I'm not out and start fighting with my brothers a lot. So, Dada or Mama used to be the third empire. So, anytime any yeah. discussion used to be there or any argument with them, used to go to them. So, I used to watch Dada, Dada, I'm not out. Dada, you know, not tell Eddie that. So, then Dada used to be Eddie, she's a small sister, yeah, that's her player. And my brother used to get so furious. So, but it was, it was a great time. <laughs> You're such a brat. I actually thought it was the other way around because elder brothers usually tend to bully their younger siblings, right? Right. <laughs> No, but but over there, you know, I, I used to bully them in such a way, I mean, not really bully them, cause mama, dada, get it through them. Huh, I, I hope that's like that right smart. <laughs> we have seen it in all your in all your live shows that you are doing right now. We've seen how you bully everybody and I didn't know you did that to your brothers when you were so little. Yeah. But it, it, it's nice to hear that. And did they have a nickname for you at that time? At that just time, to trouble, just to trouble me. <laughs> Um, not really. Like, there was nothing like that. They, no, they used to actually, I used to hate it when anybody used to call me a girl. Means like, uh, because I was so used to it, like, when I used to bat out there in the gully, everybody used to be that, like, ye ladka hai ki ladki hai. so if anybody would tell me I'm playing like a girl, I used to get so irritated. So on purpose, <laughs> they used to call me a girly come here and all that. I used to get so irritated, so I think it would be that. So now, I've seen some, some of your fans call you Jimmy, so I'm sure you enjoy that, right? Yeah, I do enjoy Jimmy. No, no, no. They call you Jimmy, Jimmy, not Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not in that much. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, did you did you start playing hockey at the very same time? No, no, no. Hockey started uh, when we shifted from Bandup to Bandra. So we shifted just for cricket and sports actually. Actually for sports because in Bandup we didn't have great facilities. And we used to like literally wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, catch a train all the way from Bandup to Bandra, which used to take us almost one and a half, two hours to get to the ground. We used to be there before 7 o'clock because our practice used to start at 7. So my mom and dad, you know, made the decision that uh, I think we should make this move for all three kids because they were into sports and that might help them. So the pastor of our church, Brother Manuel, he helped us in this. So... Uh, first two or three months, our house wasn't ready yet in Bandra. So he gave us a house to stay. So we used to stay with him, with his family. We were very close. Uh, we are very close, I mean. 
so his daughter used to play hockey so at the age of age i think uh, he did, he gave me a hockey stick and he said you used to start going and playing hockey with abigail so i said okay because i loved sport i i loved anything that would you know get me out of the house and you know not okay. make me sit down in one corner so i started playing and i started doing well over there also so i see hockey started for me like that Oh, nice, nice, nice. Tell me the story behind that photograph with Padma Shri Dhanraj Pillai. Uh, yeah, so uh, that was my first hockey tournament. I think I was playing from Saint Joseph Convent, Bandra, and uh, I was the youngest over there. Actually, uh, the practice used to be in the secondary school, so there is secondary and primary. Both are different sections. So I was the only girl who had special permission. We spoke to the principal and asked her that. Jamie loves playing hockey. My mom met and asked her, "So can she go for practice in the secondary school?" So the principal said, "Okay," and she said she might be little late for the class, but I'll make sure she'll be there most probably on time, like almost every time on time. So she said, "Okay." So I started playing, and I also played the tournament from that school, and I think we came third place or second place that year, and I got uh, the award from Mr. Dhanraj Pide of the uh, most promising hockey player. Of that, so that was very special. He had given me a hockey stick, and that was very special to me. I'm sure it's special because he's a legend in hockey, and exactly. you have gone ahead and met legends across all sports. Hello. Yeah. So tell me, you played hockey and cricket. I know you enjoy playing both. I can see the excitement while you're talking about it. Tell me, which sport do you love the most? It's very difficult for me to say because I love both equally. Actually, I used to play hockey and football also in school, but then everything was clashing at one point, so I had to make a decision between, you know, uh, these four sports. But then my mom and dad said, "You choose two. Let's see what happens next, and we'll see." So then both started clashing again. Hockey and cricket also started clashing, and since I reached a higher level in cricket than hockey, then I chose cricket. But to be very honest, I love both, and I wish you know I can play. Hockey and cricket both for India. Hmm. I'm sure you will make that happen with the dedication that you showed to travel from Bhanduk to Bandra to train. I can see that coming as well. And uh, all the best to you on that front. Thank you. And uh, uh, Jenny, you. I want to talk about those 202 runs that you scored of 163 balls. The mm-hmm. second woman after Smriti Mandana to score a double century in a 50-over match. Twenty-one boundaries. Who does that? <laughs> What was the mindset like when you walked on the field that day? To be very honest, that match I really didn't think of, you know, scoring the double century and all that. My only target was to to bat full fifty overs. That was my target because uh, just uh, leaving two matches, I had played uh, two matches before I played against Gujarat and I scored one seventy-eight. And I was going to score that se- uh, double century, but in that bargain, I threw my wicket. So then uh, the match against Saurashtra, my mom and dad both had come to watch that game. They only travelled just to watch that game. And I told you that my target was just to bat full 50 overs and just play according to the merit of the ball. And once I reached 150, then you know, like around 175, I'm like, I'm come so far. I don't need to do anything extra. I just need to bat till the end. The 200 will follow automatically. So yeah, so it so happened that you know that day I scored a double century, and it was even more special for me because both my mom and my dad both were over there, and you know just to when I lifted that helmet and that bat, and I could see that joy on their faces. You know, that time I realized, okay, I've done something today in life. So that was very special for me. All of your hard work summed up in that one moment for you, because along yeah. with your ability of being a great cricketer, it's the blessings that makes the difference. I agree. Right? I agree totally. So talking about that, you got blessings from the God of Cricket just before your first international tour for South Africa, uh, Sachin sir. What advice did he give you? So uh, you know, it was it is actually my privilege that I get to talk to him and get to speak to him. And you know, uh, when I just got uh, selected for India, I was going to make my debut in South Africa. Sachin sir came to know and he said. He called me home and he said, "You know, we can have a conversation." And I was like in shock. I'm like, "Okay, is this really happening?" I mean, I've always seen such and so playing on TV, and you know, so many fans, so many, and I am getting this opportunity to go to his house and talk to him. So that was so special for me. 
and uh, i remember you know when i got selected to play for india and everybody came to know it was in the news and all many people called me they were wishing me congratulations they were really happy for me and i believe they you know wanted the best for me but uh, whenever they were saying congratulations the very second sentence was there it was like oh it's south africa south africa has swinging tracks <laughs> and fast tracks and i'm like man i am a 17 year old girl who's going to make my debut in south africa so mm-hmm. i mean i don't want to you know think about all these negative things so they meant well for me but it was actually adding a bit of pressure because i never played overseas so i was thinking how will south africa be will it be like that it will be like this so i so i went and to sachin sir's house and he uh, made me sit he made me feel very comfortable and the first question he asked me was are you nervous and I, i was like yes sir i am nervous because it's my first time with the indian team and also it's my first time going to south africa and many people have told me you know that south africa there's a lot of bounce or a pace and all that so first words that came out of his mouth he said is that south uh, means you're nervous that means you care for the game and that put me at so much ease because i've always heard people saying that no you're playing international cricket now you can't be nervous you just cannot be nervous but just coming out from his mouth and he said you're nervous that is because you care for the game that put me at so much ease then he asked me how have you prepared for south africa i said i've heard a lot that you know it has bouncy tracks and quick tracks so i've been working i've been playing with the boys and also uh, on the bowling machine practicing some short pitch deliveries and all that So he told me one thing that you know I'll never forget. He's like, even in life, you always get two options. One is the positive, and one is the negative. And it all depends on what message you are sending to your brain. If you all, if you go and think, okay, South Africa tracks are fast, ball is going to swing, then your mind, your body will react in that negative way. But if you send this message to your brain that okay, it's South Africa, fast track means the ball is going to come even more better on my bat. and i could yes. if i just get in line and time it it's going to go for a boundary it's going to go well so i was like yeah that makes so much sense and then he said it's that it's the perspective in which you take it and the message that you send across your mind and he said uh, he told me you know i have seen your batting i feel you have no problem in south africa and also i love batting at south africa because they are like batting tracks for us so oh. i was like okay <laughs> that is so nice and i feel i felt so confident you know after speaking to him because after all the negativity and everything this gave me so much confidence because coming from someone like sachin sir means so much so yeah so that's what actually helped me but nervousness journey is a great sign it means you always want to put your best foot forward and that's where the nervousness is coming from and obviously yeah. sachin sir told you all about it and the motivation of this advice came through with that catch it came out of nowhere You just struck the ball from the air because the commentator had already announced for a six. I know. <laughs> What people spoke about the timing of that catch, but tell us all about that training. Who helped you train to be so good for Team India? So yeah, so it's not just one person. It's been so many people, and it's also been uh, Venantia sir, who has been my trainer. Even before I could play for India, he was the one who worked hard after me, and he was the one who said, you know. Jim, I'm going to make sure you reach to this level, and that's what he did. And he always told me, "You don't worry about anything. Just trust me, and I'll make sure you go there." And we worked a lot, uh, even before I played for India. I think it was one year before I played for India. I started. I joined a fitness uh, gym, V Fitness, because I realized that you know I can't give an excuse that I'm young. If I am going to play at the top level, I have to make sure that my fitness is that much. So yeah. like that, I spoke to my dad, and then we came to know about uh, Wee Fitness, and we joined. And after that, things just changed drastically for me. I used to score, I used to score like seventies, eighties, and hundreds max. But after working so much on my training and my fitness and my strength, those hundreds got converted into two hundreds, into one seventy eight, one fifties. And you know, I started seeing the difference. And uh, in my game itself, just working on fitness, and I realized that cricket is not just about skill. it's also about fitness so i worked a lot upon you know that balance and you know the jumps and everything in my workouts also and one more thing would be in south africa uh, we've had we fielded a lot especially because it was my first international uh, tournament so we just were our fielding coach so he made sure that uh, we get like 
I would say he made sure that you know he trains us in such a way that whatever happens in the match, we are already well prepared. So I remember my first uh, fielding practice in South Africa, and uh, Sir was standing at the centre, and we were at the boundary line, and he was hitting the ball. And South Africa is very windy, so if you hit it with the wind, it comes even more faster. So okay. first ten catches I was fine, but after that my hands literally started becoming black and blue and red, and it actually swelled up. But in spite of that, he made us catch it because that's how our hands will get stronger. So mm-hmm. I would say that catch is, you know, like uh, the world of all the efforts and hard work we put in behind because to catch that one single catch, I don't know how many, like more than thousand catches we've taken in practice just to perfect that one catch. So. Uh, that was very special to me, and I remember when I caught that catch, I literally had tape on my hand because my hand was already swollen like that. Before so, the match, you mean? Uh, yeah, actually, it was during that tour. Means uh-huh. I just put it so that my hand is protected. Okay. So yeah, so it, it, I actually have the picture of it. Yes, so I so can. this hand was swollen, <laughs> and this hand, if you can see so it. So I would like to thank Beena yes, for actually who did it. Yeah, so that was after my first training session, but then I got used to it and my hands got stronger, so now it's fine. So there is a uh, there is a saying in Hindi, "Himmate marda to madate khuda." When you show that hard work and dedication, from nowhere this miraculous power comes and helps you, and yeah. you are a very person. I agree. So, I agree to that. And you know the best part of this cast was my dad was like just behind me. He was just uh-huh. sitting behind me in South Africa, so that also made it more special. Oh, so sweet! So after the catch, you definitely turned and looked at that. Yes. No, <laughs> I, I was um, I was myself amazed that oh, I caught the catch, and if you would see my reaction, I was like, I caught the catch. It was like that. Yes. Because I, I was only really so amazed that okay, I took that. Who knows yeah. for you, but so sweet. That, that was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I would say the one of the best catches in women cricket. More power to you. Thank you. Now, uh, also, in terms of uh, the food you eat, tell me what are the sacrifices that you have made to maintain those fitness levels? I think the biggest sacrifice I have made would be uh, Nutella pancakes because that's my favorite. Uh, yeah. But but uh, I would say yeah, I have uh, actually you know kind of avoided a lot of junk food which I really love to eat just so that you know I stay fit. <laughs> I know you can relate a lot. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of sacrifice put in because you you don't get to eat the food you really love to eat. You have to make sure that you have a proper balanced diet, and you know after training, especially, it's very important what you eat. So yeah, so I have also done that a lot. I used to have these cheat days. So like once in a way, then I used to you know go with my brother to Kasi Road and have a chicken shawarma and uh, Nutella pancakes. That became our tradition before every tour. But yeah, that would be only on cheat days. Oh, all right, all right. I'm glad to hear at least you have cheat days <laughs> because the kind of dedicated person you are, I thought I think that also would be minus. But uh, no, once in a way, it's fine actually. Yes, I think that also brings a joy yeah. to you, right? It kind of makes you feel low. Like, I cannot eat what I want to eat, but <laughs> it's all for it. It's all for a better future. And you have a def- you definitely have a bright future, girl. You know what, Jamie? Uh, I have seen a lot of things that you've been up to on Instagram. Like singing and uh, your shows, Double Trouble and the Super Over. Hearty congratulations! It has been very successful. Tell me how your practice sessions are turning out. How you how you coping so, uh, up with that? Yeah. So since it's the lockdown, I cannot go to the ground and you know because just following the rules given by the government, just trying to be home and you know trying to do the best I can. But so I've been practicing with my dad down in the building. So we have a small area where we can practice in the building. So I've been practicing with plastic balls, but it's turning out really well. It's like I'm going back to you know like ten, you know like how many, twelve years ago when I started in the same house with the plastic balls. So like now I'm just getting those flashback memories again, starting with the same basics. But yeah, this is the best I can do, and it's actually helping me to you know, stay in touch and just you know uh, get have the knack of you know batting. Otherwise, like nothing else can be done. I know, and it's wonderful that you you are going back to your very first coach, your dad, yeah. Mr. Ivan Roderick. And journey on life connect is all about learning something new. So mm-hmm. I would, you are a little champ for me, but a bigger champion today for me is the man 
who not only created but molded this little champ who's yeah. made India proud and her parents proud on all levels. So can we have the man of the hour, your dad, Mr. Ivan Roderick from Life Connect, please join us. Definitely. Join us right I mean, he would love to have Mr. Dad. Dad is here today, actually. He was sitting with me. All right. Hi, Mr. Thank Roderick. Hi, thank you thank for such a beautiful intro of mine that you gave. <laughs> you so I am the champion all... of a champ. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> What I want to know from you is what encouraged you, first up, to create a women's cricket team in her school, that is St. Joseph's Convent High School? Uh, Jenima used to come to practice with her brothers. And uh, one day, after, after our practice, the Stanislaus coach told me, that there is a girls' selection going on. I did not know, I did not even know girls' cricket exists during that time. Okay. So one of the coach told me, uh, there is a selection for the girls at Shivaji Park. So why don't you take Jemima there and go for the selection? So I took Jemima for the selection there. Okay, she was uh, eight and a half years old, very small. Okay, I, I carried her kit bag in one hand and she holding my other hand, okay? Oh. And we were walking along the pitch and all girls were sitting down for selection. They were all college girls. So it was open selection, okay? Oh. All for MCA summer camp selection. And all the girls are sitting down there for selection, big girls, college going girls, mm -hmm. uh, all in their uh, above 18, okay? okay? And looking at her, such small girl coming for selection, everybody started giggling and laughing. My elder son, Enoch, who is just uh, three years older to her, he told me, Dada, let Jemima bowl one ball and then they will come to know who is Jemima. Yeah. Okay. So we went to the selector. <laughs> the selector was amazing, such a small girl. But I, I was like that tiny. So. Yeah, I've seen yeah. your picture. You're like so tiny tall. Yeah. Yeah, and very small hair she had. Okay. So. Selector asked, what is the department? I told bowling. Yeah, that time I was a bowler come batter. I started off cricket as a medium pacer. So, her first department I told bowling. So, the selector threw the ball to her. First ball, she bowled very nicely. Stump to stump. Batsman defended it. Second ball, bowled. The selector wow. immediately called her, took her name. From that year, from that time till now, she has never sat on the bench. It's like that. Except till, that. till she came to play for India, where in a certain time she had to sit. But uh, otherwise, she has never sat. For Mumbai teams, so she has never sat. In Mumbai, summer camp matches are very... MCA organized summer camp matches are very, very important for them to get selected for Mumbai. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so that selector told she is getting only the summer camp matches to play. If you start in her school or you get a school uh, team. team going, mm -hmm. so she would get extra tournaments to play. Okay. Now I approached a few coaches. Uh, they told, yeah, we will come. But when they saw the girls and their capability, not even capable of holding the bag, they thought, it's not our baski baat nahi hai. Then my wife told me, Ivan, you are such a good player. Why don't you, you coach them? Why are you running after other coaches? So this is how the St. Joseph's team started. So women power has encouraged you. Little Jay and your wife have encouraged you to start the, the yeah. women's team. Yeah, behind every successful man. In my life, there are two, two women. Two women. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful to know that. Wonderful to know that, Mr. Roderick. Right now on Life Connect, as I told Jamima, it's about learning something new. Today, I want you to send across a message to parents all across the world, especially in India, to encourage their daughters to take up sports as a profession. Please, sir. See, first of all, uh, I would like to tell the parents, I mean, don't make any disc uh, discrimination between boys and girls. They have the same ability like the boys. In fact, they can do better. Okay. 
uh, certain parents they they just think that okay i have to work after the boys okay my boy can make my dream come true or it is it is not like that your girl also can bring honor for the country and for yourself it just they require a backing they require someone to tell them don't worry we are there after you you believe me or not i i i used to be there for every matches of jamima so when she called me she told dada uh, so i told baby i am not feeling well dada if you come but it's okay so immediately i told nothing doing i caught a bus and from bombay to indore i reached there to the indore stadium right at 8:30 just 5 to 10 minutes before the match could start mm-hmm. and when she saw me she was like overjoyed she was the third highest run scorer okay and after that she was selected for south africa That's so what bad. i want to tell the parents is what your daughter requires your backing this is what i want this is the message that i want to send forth to the parents yeah, so it always feels nice you know when our dad says i know like okay like He's there, so things are going to be okay. So it's like you know, kind of supports me too. So even when she yes. plays the match, even international match, she's like she will be looking at me like that, like this. How so? She will want. How she wants me to be there. This this takes me back to that scene in Dangal where every time she's going to make a move, she does that eye contact with Amir Khan. <laughs> I still do that actually. <laughs> you still do that? That's so sweet. <laughs> Since uh, Mr. Roderick, you've given the world such a wonderful message of how your parents should come and support their daughters. I would like Jemmy to now dedicate a song to you. Yeah, sure. So this is a song I actually. Uh, it's like my original. I made it on my own. It's not a very great song. It's a few lines, but yeah, I would like to play it for you, Dad. First time I'm hearing it. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. he he didn't know anything about this. So yeah. I say thank you thank you for every little thing that you do I say thank you thank you for loving me with a heart so true and I love you oh. Thank you for encouraging uh, women you. to take up uh, cricket professionally, and more power to you. Thank you for joining us on Life Connect. Thank, so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, that was great. Thank Jenny. you for giving me this idea. And I'm glad you executed so well. You are a perfectionist, always good at what you do, and thank <laughs> you for doing it. I actually got goosebumps, you know, while you were singing. I could, I could feel the love flowing through. Thank you. You were part of the World Cup, the T20 World Cup that happened recently in Australia. I am very, very proud of the whole team: Smriti Mandana, Harmanpreet Kaur, and so uh, Shefali, Tanya, all of you girls. But I have a question: Despite winning all the group matches, do you think that the team somewhere lost momentum? Because there was a gap between the last match played and the final match. Yeah. Do you think it was because of the momentum? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look at it, you can actually add a lot of reasons to it. But yeah, that would be one of the reasons because, as you said, we couldn't play the semi-finals because of the rain. And mm-hmm. momentum in a T20 tournament is very important. Whereas Australia got to play that game, even though it was a shortened game, but they got to play that game, and you know, so it was like more than a week. Where we didn't play a cricket game, a cricket match. We practice. Practice is good, but you know when you're in that flow of a tournament, that momentum is very important. So yeah, I would say that could be one of the reasons. But at the end, you know, we cannot give any reason that you know why did we lose a match because at that day, whoever does well is the winner. So you can't really give other reasons. Yes, and I saw Alisa's batting still. So they were fantastic. Seventy-five coming up, thirty-nine balls. Yeah. But I will soon see you doing something like that. And uh, with that, Jamie, I am now going to be heading to the Mad Rat segment of Life Connect. Okay. You are a fun girl, so I don't need to tell you that you have to be fun. But you have to be 
quick with your replies, though. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, why are you calling me, sir? <laughs> it's just a saying, <laughs> man. Not, not <laughs> yeah, actually, some people kind of call me bro also. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. So, my first question is, एक बार जो मैंने कमिटमेंट कर ली तो मैं अपने आप की भी नहीं सुनता इस डायलॉग आई मेक इट सुनती टेल मी हु डज दिस डायलॉग बेस्ट सूट इन द वुमेंस क्रिकेट इंडिया टीम एट द मोमेंट व्हाट द डायलॉग अगेन एक बार जो मैंने एक बार जो मैंने कमिटमेंट कर ली तो मैं अपने आप की भी नहीं सुनती आई एम मेकिंग इट सुनता अब आई एम सेइंग सुनती दिस वुड बी शिखा पांडे आई थिंक ओह बट वंस शी डिसाइड समथिंग शी विल स्टिक टू इट शी वोंट चेंज But most people have also said that you are very focused on field. Yeah, I am focused on field, uh, but that's very different to the kind of sentence, no? Because if Shikari says that okay, I am going to do this, then she makes oh, the sure she does it. Ah, that way, that way, fantastic. So your favorite batting shot on field? My favorite batting shot. Batting like shot would be the cover drive. Oh, huh? cover drive, the cover drive. Cover that's drive. That's my favorite. Right. We know uh, Rohit Sharma is your idol, but who is your idol in the current women's cricket team? I think it would be uh, Mitali Raj because of her consistency. Reaction when people call you the Chahal of uh, women's team. <laughs> That would be my reaction. I, I, I would like to be called Jemima Rodriguez, sorry, not uh, somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, which series uh, on the OTT platforms have you binged watching recently? Which series? So right now I am on Suits on Netflix. So that would be the one I'm watching. Okay, I haven't watched it, so I'm going to check that out. But three years and Brooklyn Nine Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine is my favorite, but I've already finished that. All right, all right. I haven't watched both, so I am going to check <laughs> it out. <laughs> uh, okay, what is most important in your life? Growth or money? What is most important in my life? Important in your life? Growth or money or both? Growth. definitely growth yes we've seen the growth which is incredible from your end the bowler you admire the bowler i admire would be uh, malzan cap from south africa mm mm-hmm. good choice now this question you better be honest with me okay your recent mm-hmm. crush my recent crush um i think it would be a uh, Rohit Sarra uh, after Sky after Sky Spink I really liked his acting and you know him so yeah good choice he's pretty cute if given three wishes what would they be three wishes oh this is very tough i've not yet thought about that <laughs> now three uh, uh, wishes first should definitely be to lift up the world cup uh, actually third and The second and the third also would be lift up the World Cup, the so three World Cup for India. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More power to you, girl. I like this <laughs> question. Okay, now the last question is a song that describes you best. You got to sing a it song. Please. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give you time. I'll give you time. I'll give you time on this one. I'll give you time on this one. I am a very know. bad singer. I'm a very bad singer. Although my name is Madonna, I'm a very bad singer. <laughs> But this one's for you. बार बार हा बोलो यार हा अपनी जीत हो उनकी हार आई वॉन्ट यू टू सिंग फ्यू लाइन बिकॉज दिस इज अ फैन सेगमेंट ऑल योर फैन आई आस्क वॉट क्वेश्चन यू वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू प्लीज डू अ जुगल बंदी ऑफ फ्यू सॉन्ग्स फॉर अस सो वुड यू जर्नी जुगल बंदी Okay. Whatever, whatever, whatever you're good at, or something that you've done earlier. Um, I don't know. So all I'm just fans. This one's for you. I'm for 
all our love and support i would actually take this opportunity to thank everyone because you know it's the fans that actually make the players and just to receive that support every time you're out there on the field you know gives you a different motivation to go and do well for the country so thank you everyone and really love we all love and support thank you thank you so much for being such a sweetheart i had mentioned the bundle of joy and you are exactly that and uh, tumhara sath hum bhi kabhi nahi chhodenge and we'll always be supporting you before you leave before you leave all of the people in australia you were teaching them that twist <laughs> let's do it with the people of india come on i want you to do that with the people of india jami let's okay. do it together everyone who's watching us live Please stand up, place your phones wherever you can, and let's do the twist with Jemmy. First, it shows the step. Shows the step. So first, you get your leg like that. Okay. You mean like this, right? Yeah, like that. And then okay. you go like that, like a bend. Yeah. Jemmy, can you place your phone where we can see your legs too? Because I don't think they want to watch me more. They want to watch you more. Yeah. Sure. Is it better now? Uh, yep. Everybody, join in with Jimmy Varon. It goes like this. Yes, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna play the song. I'm gonna play the song. Hold on, hold on, Jimmy. Okay, okay. Let's go. Five, six, seven. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much, Han. Thank you so much. It was so much <laughs> fun. And I am not surprised at all. I knew this live connect is going to be thamakedar, entertaining, and that's exactly and inspiring. And uh, thanks to your dad, Mr. Ivan Rodriguez, who also gave us a brilliant message to take back. Loads yeah. of love and all the very best. Keep making us proud and more power to you girls. Thank you. And I would also like to say you, Madonna, are doing such a brilliant job in your field. Also, like really amazed by the way you conducted this whole interview. And I mean, you have a bright future even in this too. So thank you so much once again for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you for joining us today. So guys, hope you enjoyed this oh so uh, energetic, powerful episode with uh, this young sensation of Team India. I thoroughly had a great time. You guys have a great weekend and keep the love flowing for Jemmy. And if you enjoyed this episode, you can send in some love for me too. <laughs> Take care, bye bye, and keep smiling. <laughs>